While watching mutant or superhero movies, the urge always appears to insert the fantasy world into reality and debunk fantasies of scriptwriters with scientific critique. But if after seeing a new Logan movie, you're wondering what will happen to the Wolverine if you cut him in two like a worm, don't count on biology giving you a clear answer. First things first, you need to determine how exactly you want to cut the X Men character. Regeneration will have more chances to succeed if the nerve center of a multicellular organism, or the core of a single cell organism remain intact, and that's why cutting across is the way to go. But in the movie, spoiler alert, we could see Logan's clone being shot in the head, yet he barely managed to regenerate. This seems complete nonsense, but it's possible, in theory. The nature behind regeneration still raises tons of questions. Regeneration is the most ancient defensive mechanism, it's as old as protozoa and necessary to survive anywhere. Almost all organisms possess it, and unlocking its full potential will lead to immortality. Also, similarly to all other things ancient, omnipresent, and powerful, regeneration is a complete mystery to us. First things first, the brain or the core being intact doesn't mean regeneration. Yes, you won't make two new earthworms by cutting one in half. The part with the head will regenerate, the other part will die. That being said, there's also good news, as planarian flatworms are able to regenerate into a fully functioning organism from a very small part. During an experiment, a planarian worm was dissected into 279 pieces, all of which regenerated. If you force an adult sponge through a sieve and thus separate its cellular structure, then put the separated parts in water and allow them to mix, over time, they won't regenerate separately, but will instead merge and reconnect, over time forming the original sponge. No one can tell for sure, how they do this exactly. It isn't crystal clear, why some organisms have stronger regenerative properties and some weaker ones. At first glance, it has something to do with the complexity of an organism. The more differentiated a system, the harder it is to replace cells and conduct the reparation process. In Soviet circles, this thesis called the virchow weissmann theory. Complex mammals such as humans have strong restoration processes only as embryos or infants, when their cells aren't completely differentiated from their stem cells. Meaning if an infant cuts of the tips of their fingers, they'll regenerate, but an adult's won't. Whatever you do, please don't try this at home. But a more complex organism, doesn't always necessarily mean weaker repair properties. For example, in the lower group of primitive protozoa, the flagellates, we haven't witnessed any regeneration amongst a part or several parts of their body. And complex protozoa, such as ciliates, are indulging themselves in whole regenerative parties. And that's not even mentioning lizards regenerating their tails. It's lizards which have prompted us to another theory, based on biology. According to the theory, regeneration goes where it is needed. Where ordinary physiological cell replacement is so often disrupted by its restorative counterpart. That this results in them simply switching from one regeneration mechanism, which we all use daily to restore ourselves, to a different one which grows. During evolution, lizards often had their tails grabbed by predators. That's why those lizards that managed to learn autotomy, meaning self-amputation, were the ones to pass on their genes. But for lizard with no tail, life is not easy. That's why regeneration switched modes to grow a new one. But don't hasten to envy lizards. Their new tail is far from perfect. It's shorter, dimmer, and most importantly, it no longer contains spinal bones. Even the kindness of regeneration cannot work miracles. Besides, a huge effort is required to instantly reconstruct bone tissue. That's why Logan's most mysterious superpower isn't his ability to squeeze bullets out of his body, but his perfect leak-proof digestive system. To supply himself with such powerful regenerative abilities, he'd need to consume as much energy as a nuclear power plant. Basically, even if you fed Logan the feast of the century, and then sliced him in two, the newly fledged Logans would turn out to be pathetic. With only half of the original brain, it'd take a while for them to recover basic skills, such as reflexes, they'd suffer from amnesia, dissociative disorders, and it's unlikely they'd get along. Right Hemisphere Logan and Left Hemisphere Logan would most likely have very different personalities and habits. Each of them would be second to the original in strength, intellect and the thickness of their sideburns. Any lizard would confirm this for you. If you liked the episode, please leave a like, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell. Share your thoughts on the subject in the comments. If you have a question, join the Nouchpok group in VK and ask about everything that keeps you up at night.